What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet VGC 2023 video. You know, my apologies, this is actually really late. Um, this tournament happened over the weekend. I was at Portland Regionals and I, I've just been so tired and busy since I came back that uh, I haven't actually uploaded a video yet. But, you know, first video back, we're gonna talk about how Portland Regionals went, um, what, you know, actually won the tournament, and, uh, you know, just some other stuff regarding like where the metagame's heading, etc. You guys already know what's going on. So yeah, if you guys enjoyed this standpoint point in time, do me a favor, leave a like in the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications because I bring you daily competitive Pokemon content. Uh, and answer my comment question of the day, which is, what do you think about the current state of the metagame? Anyways, let's go ahead and get into it. So, uh, let's go ahead and just acknowledge the thing that we are just going to acknowledge for every tournament. Yes, there is a Fluttermane on every single team. There isn't a flood or every single team in top eight. There isn't a flutter mean in every single team in like, you know, top cut, but uh, in, in top eight or not, sorry, not top cut in uh, day two, there wasn't a, a, a flutter man in every single team, but uh, in top eight, yeah, there was, but yeah. So let's get right to the winner. So the team that won was actually Joe UX9's team. Finally, Joe uh, actually, instead of getting runner up at a regional tournament, he, you know, he kept getting runner up and it was kind of frustrating to watch because it felt like he was doing well in every set, but there were just some things that didn't happen, like an icy wind missing, sometimes, you know, a hydro pump wind connect or just a lot of different things. And in fact, Joe got a little unlucky during this set too, but he pulled through with some sleep pattern misses. But yeah, so the team that Joe used was actually pretty much the exact same team that he used to win that uh, victory road tournament the week prior. And it does make use of eject pack Torkoal. Now, I want to talk about Eject Pack Torkoal for a couple of minutes here because there are some nuances of it that some people won't um, completely get. So, looking at the team, we have Eject Pack Torkoal with Terra Flying, Overheat Helping, and Fissure Protect next to a Jump Up with Sleep Powder, uh, Leaf Storm, Encore, and Tailwind with a Covert Cloak and Terra Water. So, the reason this combo works so well is because Eject Pack Torkoal is actually one of the most reliable leads you can have for a Sun team. You set up the Sun uh, and what will happen on the on like the first turn actually is pretty interesting so the eject pack will activate after sun goes up if you are intimidated so let's say you lead off versus an arcanine that means that you let off versus the arcanine with the torkoal the sun goes up you get intimidated immediately on turn zero and then you get a free switch out into whatever you want with no intimidate going off versus the pokemon this means that your jump pluff can be next to a choice scarf great tusk at neutral and you can just go ahead and spam Earthquake and go for like Tailwind or Sleep Powder or whatever you need to. And that is just super, super powerful. Um, obviously, if you see an Arcanine on the other side of the field, Joe also has the Terra Fire King Gambit, which matches up pretty well into that. You can't be burned. You resist the uh, Flare Blitz. And yeah, uh, the rest of the team is, you know, I've covered it in a previous video. If you want to check that out, I'll link it at the end. Um, but the rest of the team is basically the exact same as uh, what we saw in that other tournament. The whole team functions around... Cover Cloak Jump Pluff being able to outspeed basically anything under uh, Sun. Uh, and that includes Booster Energy Iron Bundle. Since Booster Energy Iron Bundle does get plus one, a Jump Pluff will always outspeed it. I actually do have an example team here. Um, there it is. Sorry. So, like, uh, the speed investment that your Jump Pluff needs to outspeed Iron Bundle is 155 because. Iron Bundle hits 309 at plus one with the booster energy. At plus two with Sun, obviously you're gonna hit 310 with this. And under Tailwind, you can just go ahead and make sure your other Pokemon outspeed. Other Pokemon that benefit are obviously gonna be like Fluttermane from the Sun. You're gonna get either a speed boost or a special attack boost. I actually don't remember if Joe's was speed or special attack boosting, but obviously with that choice specs and Tailwind, if you are a special attack boosting, Hammer Fairy Dazzling Gleam will, will basically one-shot anything. And it's an extremely oppressive Pokemon. So yeah. Uh, as for other things, Terra Flying Chen Pound next to uh, Choice Scarf Great Tusk is also pretty good. Obviously, you get that sort of ruined defense drop combined with the just insane power of a Choice Scarf Great Tusk under the sun, getting that life or boost from the sun. Yeah, team is very, you know, understandable. We've been seeing it for um, about a week or two now. Uh, and I do want to point out the, the originator of this team was 45 Mice and uh, Santino Tarquinio. Uh, if you don't know who Santino Tarquinio is, he actually won the Players' Cup in 2020, I believe. 2021, possibly. I forget what year it was. But yeah, um, there were more than one per year, but it was it was a Players' Cup in 2020. Yeah, uh, this is the team. Won the whole tournament. Very cool. Very impressive. We already know what it does. Let's get on to other stuff. So the runner-up was Ding Sushou. 
Uh, and this team is actually one that we've seen going around for a little while too. It's a variant of Dondoza Glamora that takes um, advantage of Chiyu plus Iron Bundle. And I think it's actually really cool. So Chiyu plus Iron Bundle really had like good results during this tournament. We see it uh, here in the runner-up place. We also see it in fifth with Navit Joshi. Um, we see it again with Rafael Bagara. And we do see it a few more times during the tournament. It was actually one of the combos that um, popped off a lot during this event. If we take a look at how it functions, you can see that uh, it is just like, you know, standard Glamora lead with Dondoza stuff in the back. But the threat of, you know, Beads of Ruin plus a Booster Energy Iron Bundle is really strong. There are some variants of this team that do run Encore over Icy Wind, but I think Icy Wind makes sense for this team. Uh, the Hydro Pump coming off of Iron Bundle's uh, base, I believe it's 124 special attack. Let me take a look at it real quick. I always forget what the actual number is. Yeah. Hydro Pump off of 124 special attack is pretty strong, but keep in mind that most Iron Bundle are running a Timid Nature. So uh, it actually isn't like the super, you know, it isn't like a super strong special attack set at that point. However, if you combine it with Beads of Ruin, it becomes a really hard move to switch in on. Yes, it's inaccurate, but base 110 with a Life Orb boost effectively because of the Beads of Ruin is actually really, really annoying. Combined with that, uh, the Focus Sash on the Chi Yu means that you're going to be able to go for like Heat Waves after an Icy Wind. Uh, Icy Wind will speed drop whatever you need to. Uh, and then like you can actually, you're usually going to get at least like two attacks off with this Chi Yu is basically the point of it. Uh, because you're going to outspeed on the first turn, take a hit, and then the next turn you go for another one. So a lot of things just get absolutely shredded. Versus opposing Don Dozo, Terra Ice Freeze Dry with Beads of Ruin active is, I think, a two to three shot at plus two. Uh, it slips my mind, but a lot of Don Dozo cannot take that hit very well because of the low special defense stat, lowered even more by Beads of Ruin. And yeah, it's just a super hyper offensive team with uh, AV Glamora to spread toxic debris in the field and make it difficult for things to outlast the Don Dozo in the end game. So yeah, other things that we see, uh, we do see uh, Murkrow and Golden Go take third, you know, top four again, which is something that um, has been popping up a lot lately. I keep getting comments saying that like, oh yeah, Murkrow fell off, it's no longer good. And that was only really true for Series 2. In Series 3, Murkrow is actually just fine again. Um, it has more to do with just like the ruins existing and the fact that like Priority Tailwind is really nice uh, more than anything else. So yeah, taking a look at the team, we see Citrus Berry, uh, Rage Powder, Terra Water, Amoongus, we see Gyarados of the Lumberry, Taunt, Thunder Wave, Terra Blast, Waterfall, Terra Flying, Terra Ghost, Murkrow with Tailwind, Sunny Day, Haze, Foul Play, Choice Scarf, Great Tusk, you know, a true combo, we love these two together, Thundering with the Choice Specs, and of course Golden Go with Make It Rain, Shadow Ball, Nasty Pop, Protect, Terra Water, um, nothing too fancy here, uh, I think that this is, you know, just pretty much a hyper offense team with, uh, some good stuff on it, so, yeah. Uh, if we actually take a look, this is something that we saw popping up a lot recently, and I want to make a dedicated video on why Iron Bundle Obama Snow is popping off. I actually meant to do it last week, but I'm just, I was really busy preparing for this tournament, by the way. <laughs> oh, I'll talk about how I did it at the tournament at the end, by the way. Uh, so yeah, so Iron Bundle Obama Snow is a combo that we have seen pop off a lot recently, uh, and there are a couple of variations of it. This is uh, Nails' variant. Uh, we see King Gambit with Assault Vest, Terra Fire, Iron Head, Sucker Punch, Low Kick, and Kowtow Cleave. Choice Ban, Multiscale, Dragonite. Uh, we have Focus Sash, Obama Snow with Blizzard, Helping Hand, Aurora Veil, Leaf Storm. Choice Scarf, Great Tusk with Terra Steel. Iron Bundle with Choice Specs, Hydro Pump, Freeze Dry, Sleep Talk, and Blizzard. And Boost Energy, Fluttermane. So the standard version of this team actually doesn't really run uh, Choice Specs, Iron Bundle. As a matter of fact, the Iron Bundle is usually the one setting up the, um, the Aurora Veil from my experience at the very least. Let's see if we can actually find another one of these teams further down uh, to explain how this works. So actually it might have only been nails that made it this far. Hold on, hold on, I can find one. I can definitely find one. Uh, yeah, I don't see another Obama Snow. I might be I might be stupid, I might just be missing like an obvious one, but yeah. Um, so there are some variants of it where you do actually see uh, the Aurora Veil on the Iron Bundle because it's a lot faster and harder to stop. Uh, but basically, it makes it so Iron Bundle is able to go for Blizzards in the snow, making it not only have like that increased defense stat, which coming off of Iron Bundle's uh, physical bulk, which isn't like amazing, but 114 isn't anything to scoff at. Um, it makes it so that like it's even bulkier on the physical side. You're going to start taking like, you know, close combats and stuff, which is really, really impressive. Um, but the other side of that is that 100% accurate Blizzard in the snow, 
you have helping hand Obama snow or you can just double blizzard at the same time uh and it just makes it like a really uh oppressive offensive threat and yeah I mean like of course there are like ways that you can deal with the iron bundle on lead uh sometimes you can you know just go ahead and lead off with a faster special attacker uh, of course you know with like Fluttermane with booster energy speed like that's a way that you cannot speed this Tailwind is also another way you can outspeed it and then go for a fast special move to one shot Iron Bundle. But they can be, you know, EV to actually start taking uh, stuff like, you know, Boost Energy, Shadow Balls, or Dazzling Gleams, which is not, not too much investment, but it does decrease from the offensive presence that the Iron Bundle has if you do have to invest into that. But yeah, the whole point of the team is you set up Veil like turn one, and then like your entire rest of the team are just these super bulky physical wall breakers that are really, really difficult to switch in on. And yeah, it's it's a very cool team. I I, like, uh, I enjoy it quite a bit. Uh, the rest of the top cut um, is mostly stuff that we've seen before. Uh, this actually interests me the most. I didn't get to see this one on stream. Uh, this is an Annihilate team that doesn't make use of Mousehold, but does make use of Screamtail. Um... And yeah, I mean, I guess it makes sense. Solo and Eyelip can work. You have bulk up Drain Punch. Uh, you have stuff like Screamtail to disable any moves that would bother the Annihilate. Of course, Booster Energy Screamtail will be able to outspeed non-Booster Energy Flutterman. Uh, you can go ahead and go for like Protect plus Disable on like a, a Choice Specs Moonblast and then bulk up in its face. So that, that, that does make sense. So yeah, so this top cut is um, honestly, like I, I think the one thing that we can take away from this top cut is that uh, Pala Balance is a little bit, it's falling off a little bit, and I think people are recognizing that as good as Pala Balance is, as reliable as it is, as you can see there were two in top cut here, um, it isn't like the best team in the format, it's just one that's really easy to pick up and intuitive, and I think that's like what we're going to leave this tournament knowing, it's that Pala Balance, as strong as it is, isn't the strongest team ever, and there are ways to play around it. I know there were a lot of people getting really annoyed with the format because they're like, oh, it's all Pal Balance, it's all Pal Balance. I don't think that was ever true, to be honest, but um, I think it just took a few tournaments for people to get comfortable running other archetypes because of how reliable that one archetype was. So yeah, uh, as for other things that performed well, I mean, like it's mostly just stuff that we've seen before. And I think this top cut does a good job of representing what was shown in the rest of the tournament. There was some Pal Balance, there was some Sun. Uh, we do see Mouse Ape, of course, you know, Mouse Ape's gonna exist in like every tournament. You know, shout out Alan Martinez, Mondo VGC, the GOAT. Um, and yeah, there's just like a ton of, you know, stuff that we've seen running around. I guess we can take a look at the Sand team that Len ran, uh, but it does seem like stuff that we've seen before. You know, Corviknight with um, Brave Bird, Tailwind, Bonnie Press. We see Endeavor Focus Sash Lycanroc next to a Terra Grass. Titar is actually interesting. I tend to see Terra flying more than anything for that Terra Blast, but I suppose on this team where you lack uh, Spore Switch Ins, that is pretty useful. There also doesn't seem to be Taunt. So yeah, I guess Terra Grass on Tyranitar would be quite useful. Garchomp is a Pokemon that we do see still, despite the fact that Great Tusk is, exists. I think ever since, um, I think it was Agati that ran Garchomp at that one tournament a little while back. Um, I, I think ever since then, people have kind of realized that uh, they're, they're both pretty much viable. Yeah, uh, that's basically all I really have to say for this tournament. It was mostly stuff that we've seen before, obviously, but like I wanted to get into some of the newer stuff. Um, I'm going to talk about my run really quick. My run went absolutely awful, but I did run it back at that premiere challenge. So basically what happened, um, and I'm not going to show like full details of the team yet because I'm still tweaking it for what I want to run for um, a future tournament. But I ran this team right here, Paldean Dark Evil Pack. Um, it was Fluttermane, Gyarados, uh, Wo Chen, Garganical, a Glamora, and Chiyu. I ran that in like the main tournament and... Uh, I started off 2-0, and then I lost round 3 to Philip Winget, aka that's a plus 1, shout out to him. Uh, and then from that point on, I think I lost, like, literally, like, my next two matches, and I went, like, 2-3. and three. And then from that point on, I had to win out, um, and I won, like, no, I lost, like, one more in the middle of all of them to go X and 4, meaning I didn't make points. And then I like I like won the rest of the matches. So I ended up finishing positive with 5-4, but obviously that isn't good enough to get points. So I was a little disappointed. However, the next day there was a uh premiere challenge side event. Uh and it was a really big premiere challenge. I don't know how big these premiere challenges get, but this had to be one of the biggest one of them because it was 128 players, which I believe is the maximum for a premiere challenge. Um, and I ended up winning the whole thing. And it was like it was run. All right, so I don't, this isn't on like the, the uh, event hosts part, like this, this isn't their fault. Apparently uh, the equipment used to run the tournament, like the docks and like the, the entire like 
um, network was taken away because like the contract only required the people who provided it to provide it for one day. So that was taken away, right? Which meant that like connection issues were just running rampant in the tournament. And it took us for a tournament that was best of one until top cut. It took us like six hours to get through seven rounds. Um, or no, it was less than like around an hour. It was like eight hours. And then like top cut only lasted like an hour and a half. So it was a really, really long tournament that shouldn't have been that long. And it was exhausting. Not to mention I went out the night before. I got up at like, I went to sleep at like 3.30. I was I was like hungover. Um, and like I got up at like 7 a.m. to go to this tournament. So I was like really, really, really tired. Um, and I ended up winning the whole thing with the exact same team that I used the night before. So that tells me that, like you know, like for me, when I was playing during the tournament, I was like, you know, I feel like I'm playing right, but I'm like not landing my overheats, which is a little annoying. I had like a bad stroke of luck, which a few of my games definitely like it was on me 100%. Um, but like most of the games, I felt like it was, oh, I missed my overheat. Oh, I missed my leech seed. Um, and obviously you can like play out of that, but, um, I wasn't able to bring it back. So when I left like the, the main regional, I was just like, man, I don't know if this team is it. I don't know if I should be playing this team. And then I win like the PC the next day and I go, oh, it, you know, maybe, maybe it was just like, I didn't like get like the roles I needed and stuff. So I don't know, I, I'm like in a weird position where I like the team and I might run it again at Hartford um, because of the result I had in the PC. Um, but also like I didn't like how I did in the regional. So I'm, I'm tweaking it right now. Um, I ended up leaving the PC with 30 more points. So I'm at 110 points. I need 190 more to get my world's invite. So I'm going to Hartford if I get, you know, at least 40 from there and at least 40 from Milwaukee and then 80 from um, NAIC, which is totally doable. And then I win one more premier challenge. Then I get my world's invite. Uh, I'm cutting it really close. I don't even know if I'll be able to go to worlds, but we'll see how it works out. Anyways, I just want to end the video with a little update on where I am in my world's invite run. Um, I did a community post about it the other day, but yeah. Sorry for the late video about this event. Like I said, I was busy when I was leaving Portland. So um, this is going up quite late. So yeah, if you guys enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.